This video is brought to you by Tardo, the expert in smart heating and energy management for your home. Our Tardo system has helped us heat our house more efficiently and reduced our gas consumption by around 3000 kilowatt hours. More on Tardo later in the video. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Shan. So you've got solar panels and or a battery, but you're wondering which electricity tariff is best for you, based on your consumption needs, system specifications and the time of year. In this video, I'll be running through my new month by month tariff comparison tool how to use it, how to interpret the figures generated, and what tariffs I'll be looking to switch to this year to best increase my financial returns from my solar and battery system. And once we're done, you can download the spreadsheet and have a go running your own specific numbers too. Special thanks to all of you who have already subscribed and downloaded the spreadsheet. It really helps keep the channel going and it's much appreciated. If you watched my last video on what I'm planning to do over winter, you'll know I plan to switch to Go and then back to Flux in February, based on my numbers. But export rates have changed with the Flux tariff and the month by month comparison tool gives me a clearer picture of which tariff I should be switching to and when. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Just a quick recap for context, we have a total of 8.31 kilowatt potential split over two separate arrays an 8.2 kWh battery with an AC coupled inverter and a Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, which we can charge both partially during the day and to 100% off peak. One question which was asked following on from my last video is why bother looking at this stuff and switching tariffs? The obvious reason is that it's more lucrative to match the tariff to the time of year to get the most out of your system. A bit like sticking winter tires on your car for those colder months to improve performance. Generally in the summer when solar generation is expected to be good, you'll want to be on a tariff which pays you lots for your export. Moving to a time of use import tariff over winter where solar generation is poor and you can shift your energy use and home battery charging into the off peak period. However, it's not always that clear given the multitude of smart tariffs out there, which tariff to switch to and at what point during the year. I've said it before, garbage in equals garbage out. As I'll go on to show you, the month by month data entry in this new comparison tool will improve the accuracy of the savings, payback and return on investment or ROI figures generated and allow more meaningful decisions to be made. Finally, it's good to look at this stuff because a bit of time invested now will hold you in good stead for the year and help inform future year's tariff choices. Okay, so now we know why, let's jump onto the computer, have a look at the spreadsheet and plug in some of our numbers. Now, this might look a bit daunting at first, but I'll go through which cells you need to enter what into by working through my own numbers. We'll start in the top left of the spreadsheet, where you can input information about your solar kilowatt potential. So we had an initial solar array on our garage with 10 285 watt solar panels installed in 2015, and then another 14 390 watt panels installed last year on the main house, taking us to a total of 8.31 kilowatt potential. Usable battery capacity in kilowatt hours, Ours is an 8.2 kilowatt hour battery with 8.2 kilowatt hour of usable capacity. And finally, your total installation cost. We paid £10,525 for our most recent install. And if you're interested in our experience of the process and a chance to knock £100 off your installation with iVolts, then definitely check out this video via the link at the end of the video. Below this relates to the average daily solar generation of your solar array. If you don't currently have the generation data for your solar panels, you can simply input the kilowatt potential of the system you're looking to install. And the spreadsheet will calculate the estimated generation per quarter based on my South Southwest solar arrays average annual figures, which will be enough to get you started. If you already have your solar generation figures, that's great. And you can override this and input the January to December daily average generation data here. If you want to be more specific for your own setup, but don't have your own figures yet, you can click on the help button here, which will take you to this page and should help you work it out by inputting a few details. Moving down the spreadsheet, you can add the self-consumption figures of your generator solar to your home and battery. If like me, you have a Give Energy system, you can simply work out these figures from the data in your app as shown here. So as you can see for January, we generated 310.86 kilowatt hours of which we consumed 113.08 kilowatt hours into the house and 93.47 kilowatt hours into the battery. So 133.08 plus 93.47 divided by 310.86, then times that figure by 100 equals 
Do this for each month of the year and input it into the spreadsheet. If you're in your first year and don't have this data to hand, you can always estimate your self-consumption until you accrue that data. Next is your household electricity consumption, pre-solar and battery installation. If like me, you're on a time of use tariff like Octopus Go, you can enter your peak and off-peak consumption data. You can find historical peak and off-peak electricity consumption data and your current electricity unit rates from your energy provider's online account. It might seem a bit cumbersome finding electricity consumption data to input, but accurate figures now will result in more accurate and therefore more useful results for which you can decide on which tariff to switch to and when. Moving to the last section, you can see that we can input data for three different tariffs, both import and export, on a month by month basis. So for me, I want to compare Octopus Go with Octopus Agile and Octopus Flux, but you can add in any tariff rates from Octopus or any supplier for that matter. And if you're thinking of joining Octopus Energy, don't forget our offer of an extra £20 from us on top of the £50 credit you'll get from Octopus Energy when you sign up via the link in the video description box below or by clicking in this text here in the spreadsheet. And thank you in advance if you do choose to use the referral link, it really does help keep the channel going. So thank you. We're in the northeast of England and are currently on Octopus Go to charge our plug-in hybrid electric vehicle or PHEV. During peak times we pay 29.58p per kilowatt hour and 9p per kilowatt hour off peak. For export we were previously limited to being paid 4.1p per kilowatt hour on the Smart Export Guarantee or SEG. However Octopus have brought out Octopus Fixed Lite which guarantees a fixed export rate of 8p per kilowatt hour. They've also published this helpful chart of the import and corresponding export tariff options and I'll put a link to this in the video description box below. Next is the Octopus Agile Tariff. As you'll probably be aware with Octopus Agile, the price per kilowatt hour of electricity fluctuates every 30 minutes. Generally, in the early hours of the morning, the rate will be cheaper, with the most expensive period seen between 4 and 7pm, when demand for electricity is at its highest. On this excellent website, Energy Stats UK, link in the description, you can see the average unit price for each 30 minute slot for the past year here in the northeast of England. With solar and appropriately sized battery storage, it shouldn't be all that difficult to avoid importing any electricity during the expensive 4 to 7 pm peak period. I suspect an average peak rate would be around 25p per kilowatt hour. We can see that the average price per kilowatt hour of electricity in the typical off peak period was around 18.5p per kilowatt hour. It's worth bearing in mind that these prices were taken from a time when wholesale gas prices soared, and it would be reasonable to reduce these average peak and off peak prices by around 5p per kilowatt hour. We can plug these numbers numbers into the solar and battery calculator, 20p per kilowatt hour peak and 13.5p per kilowatt hour off peak. But what about export? On Agile you have two options, either fixed or Agile. Outgoing fixed guarantees 15p per kilowatt hour for every unit you export. Outgoing Agile matches your half hourly prices with day ahead wholesale rates. Again looking back at the Energy Stats website, you can see that the historical average export rate between 9am and 4pm was around 12.5p per kilowatt hour on Agile outgoing. You can see that the export rate is higher between the 4 to 7pm period. However, as I mentioned in previous videos, I'm not keen on forced discharging my battery, as I'm going to need most of it myself in the winter, my lingering concerns regarding battery degradation, and the relatively low financial gains to be had from doing so. Unless of course it's an octopus saving session. So it appears as though a fixed 15p per kilowatt hour export on fixed outgoing would be the best way to go if I was to go with agile import. Finally, the flux tariff, specifically for those with solar and battery storage. With the flux tariff, there are three different rates for the import and export elements of this tariff. It's worth noting that this is a flexible tariff. This means that the unit rate and standing charges can rise and fall with wholesale energy prices. And I'll come back to why that's relevant and how it can impact savings later in the video. During the day, we'd be paying 26.58p per kilowatt hour. First off, that's a really good day rate, given that we're paying 29.58p per kilowatt hour on Octopus Go at the moment. But in reality, we use very little peak rate electricity. In fact, only around 0.5 to 0.75 kilowatt hours per day. And that's mainly due to if we run out of battery capacity or if the household consumption exceeds what the inverter can push out during that time. Export during the day is a guaranteed 15.58p per kilowatt hour, which is not bad, 
but it used to be higher when Flux was first introduced, as I alluded to earlier in the video. However, it's still slightly higher than the outgoing fixed at 15p per kilowatt hour. The off-peak rate or Flux import rate is between 2am and 5am and is 15.95p per kilowatt hour, which is quite a bit higher than the 9p per kilowatt hour off-peak rate with Octopus Go. The export rate during these times is 4.95p per kilowatt hour, but as I've said in previous videos, I'm not sure why you'd ever discharge at that rate. The peak import rate between 4 and 7pm goes up to 37.21p per kilowatt hour, and export follows suit at 26.21p per kilowatt hour exported. We can plug these numbers into the solar and battery calculator, but as you can see there are only two rates for import and one for export, whereas the flux tariff has three import and export rates. As mentioned before, we import very little peak rate electricity during the 4 to 7 pm period, and I've completely omitted this import rate from the numbers, instead using the day rate of 26.58p per kilowatt hour as the peak rate, with the 15.95p per kilowatt hour being used as the off-peak rate, although doing this may falsely lower my estimated saving rate. If you wanted to be more precise, you could break down the peak consumption data at the day rate and then between the 4 to 7pm period and find the average price per kilowatt hour achieved. I like running through the numbers, but that's a bit too tedious even for me. The export is a bit more tricky but it worked quite well in my previous videos estimating this figure. I suspect in January and February, I'll average around 16.5p per kilowatt hour. As generation improves in March, 18p per kilowatt hour, and once we hit spring and summertime, a range of 20 to 22p per kilowatt hour is achievable. As autumn and winter come about and solar generation falls, so will our average export rate. Okay, so now that we've spent time inputting those numbers, Let's get the results by clicking on this get results arrow. This is a great time to tell you about something we did a few years ago and wish we'd done much earlier. And that was to install a smart thermostat with smart TRVs from Tardo, who are the sponsors of today's video. We used to have a dumb heating system where if we were cold, we'd essentially have to turn on the whole house, which was hugely inefficient. Likewise, if we went out and forgot to turn off the programmer, the heating would come on and there was nothing that we could do about it. Tardo solved those issues. The clean, modern Tardo devices were easy to install, following the walkthrough guide specific for our existing boiler and programmer. Once installed, we could easily set the smart schedule for each room to fit with our family's routines and preferences. And we've learnt a lot about our house and each room from the app data, like how cold our living room gets in the winter, and we've made more changes as a result. Since installing our Tardo devices, we've reduced our annual gas consumption by around 3,000 kilowatt hours, and I'd recommend checking out Tardo's products by the links in the video description box below. And if you're not satisfied, they even have a money back guarantee. Thanks again to Tardo for sponsoring this video, and to all of you for supporting the channel. You can see that all the data we input on the previous sheet has been used and broken down into three tariff sections. In these individual tariff sections, you can see the peak, off-peak, and total daily cost before solar and battery installation. Under this are your figures after solar and battery installation. The most important bit of this subsection being the total monthly balance, which is simply the monthly saving plus the monthly export payment. Finally, you'll find the total year import cost, export, total year savings, payback, and ROI numbers. You'll notice that some of these cells are filled green, and this highlights the best result across all three tariffs. Looking at my numbers for these three tariffs, Octopus Go is a clear winner over winter, with it coming out on top for monthly balance for the months of October through till March, mainly owing to the low cost of imported electricity. Conversely, Octopus Flux dominates the months from April till September, largely based on those attractive export rates. Using these figures produced by the spreadsheet, you can decide which tariff to switch to and when. You'll notice Agile hasn't come out on top for any of the months. I suspect if you're able to automate or wish to keep track of the price of Agile, it may be much closer. But for us, the set and forget nature with the regular off-peak times of go over winter keeps things simple and works really well. So let's go back and get rid of the Agile tariff. There isn't any reason you can't mix and match your tariffs as the spreadsheet suggests. Octopus Go over autumn and winter, and Flux over spring and summer. Just a note for those of you who might be worried about switching smart tariffs during winter, it's not a problem. A few messages on Twitter, and it's usually sorted within a few hours. And there are currently no exit fees on these smart tariffs. Just be aware you cannot switch back to a smart tariff within 30 days. Okay, so now that we've got our hybrid Go Flux year planned out, let's look at the final results. 
In my previous video where I broke the data up into quarters, I'd estimated a switch back to flux mid-February would work out best financially based on my figures. However, you'll notice the month by month spreadsheet suggests waiting till April to make the switch. I suspect the reduction in the flux import and export rates have caused this, also increasing my payback time by around three years and reducing my ROI by around 7%. If you're sitting on the fence and haven't gone down the route of a solar and or battery setup yet, I'll again be looking at whether solar and or battery storage is worth it in 2024 and some things to consider. And if you want to be the first to know when that video lands, then please subscribe to the channel with the notification bell so you don't miss out. So that's how Tariff Plan sorted out for the year. What about you? You should hopefully be able to see why it's definitely worth taking the time to collect your own data, input it into the downloadable spreadsheet to help you save even more money, reduce your payback time, and increase your return on investment. Let me know in the comments section below your thoughts on what tariff or tariffs you're considering for the year. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this video too, and I'll catch you over there. Thanks for watching, see you next time.